Now, when we talk about the nerves of the head and neck, which are very commonly asked in the viva voce. Now, first question which may be asked is the nerve supply of the face or the head and neck system. Now, when we talk about the nerve supply, we mean to say either the motor nerve supply or the sensory nerve supply. If we talk about the sensory supply of face, the sensory supply of face is mainly by the divisions, the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve. It is supplying the whole of the face except a small area around the angle of mandible. So, except the skin around angle of mandible or we can say skin around this parotid region. Apart from this whole area is supplied by the trigeminal nerve, the three divisions, the three divisions are the ophthalmic nerve, the second division is maxillary nerve and the third division is mandibular nerve. These are the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve and this area that is skin around the angle of, angle of mandible, it is actually supplied by great auricular nerve. This great auricular nerve, it is coming from the cervical plexus. Now, over here only we will just mention, we have because we have just talked over regarding the trigeminal nerve, the trigeminal nerve, it gives off these three divisions that is ophthalmic, maxillary and the mandibular. So, this is the ophthalmic, this is the maxillary and the third one is mandibular. Now, these divisions, they are given off in the cranial cavity only within the middle cranial fossa. The trigeminal ganglia which is uh, present at the tip of the uh, or we can say at the tip or the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone, it from the convex surface of the trigeminal ganglia, these three divisions are being given off in the middle cranial fossa. And after being given off, all these three nerves, they will pass through different foramen so as to come towards the face. The ophthalmic nerve, it passes through the superior orbital fissure and then it comes towards the orbit and when it is passing through superior orbital fissure, just before that it divides into three branches that is lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve and the nasociliary nerve. So, lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve and nasociliary nerves, these are the branches of this ophthalmic nerve only. When we talk about the maxillary nerve, it exits the cranial cavity through foramen rotundum and after exiting this foramen rotundum, it reaches the pterygopalatine fossa, pterygopalatine fossa. Then the mandibular nerve, it exits the cranial cavity after passing through foramen ovale and uh, when it passes through foramen ovale, it, after that it reaches the infratemporal fossa. And in the infratemporal fossa, it will be giving various branches. Now, in this, you should be aware of the various branches of mandibular nerve as well as the maxillary nerve. If we talk about the mandibular nerve, the various branches which are arising from main trunk or the branches which arise from the posterior division. So, this mandibular nerve, as it comes out of out of the foramen ovale and it reaches the infratemporal region or the infratemporal fossa. First of all, there is a main trunk and this main trunk, it divides it into two divisions. So, if this is the main trunk, it divides into anterior division and the posterior division. This is the posterior division. Now, various branches are coming from the main trunk as well as the anterior and the posterior division and we should be knowing that which branch comes from which portion of the mandibular nerve. Now, when we talk about the main trunk, the main trunk, it gives rise to two branches. One is the nervous spinosus. This is the meningeal branch which supplies the dura mater and second is nerve to medial pterygoid. So, these two are the branches arising from the main trunk. Then after that, the rest of the branches arise from the divisions and in this also, 
the most important is posterior division the three main branches which arise from this and we can remember it with a mnemonic ali the a a in this is auriculotemporal nerve it is auriculotemporal nerve l is the lingual nerve and i is the infra inferior alveolar nerve the inferior alveolar nerve about the anterior division the anterior division it gives rise to four branches the three branches are for the uh, for the muscles of the mastication we have deep temporal nerve this is for the temporalis muscle then we have mesenteric nerve for the masseter the nerve to lateral pterygoid the nerve to lateral pterygoid and then we have one sensory nerve which is the buccal nerve <laughs> so in this we can see the anterior division is mainly motor it is giving motor branches and if we see the posterior division it is mainly sensory now in this posterior division the inferior alveolar nerve this is the nerve which enters the mandibular foramen of the mandible so if we talk about the inferior alveolar nerve before it enters the mandibular foramen it gives off a branch which is a very important branch of this nerve and that branch is nerve to mylohyoid nerve to mylohyoid now a specific characteristic about this nerve to mylohyoid is that it pierces a ligament and that ligament is sphenomandibular ligament so it pierces sphenom mandibular ligament this nerve it supplies mylohyoid muscle as well as anterior belly of digastric the anterior belly of digastric then apart from this nerve to mylohyoid the other branches which are given by inferior alveolar nerve are the branches given off in within the mandibular canal it gives it gives a incisive branch then it gives off dental branch then it gives off a mental branch or the mental nerve now this dental branch and the incisive branch it is supplying the teeth of the lower jaw over here and the mental branch or the mental nerve is the one which comes out from the mental foramen which is present over here on the outer aspect of the body of the mandible and this mental nerve as it comes out it supplies the skin over the chin as well as towards the lower lip so these are the branches of the mandibular nerve if we talk about the branches of the maxillary nerve the maxillary nerve we have already told that it is located in the pterygopalatine fossa it is located in pterygopalatine fossa when it comes from the middle cranial fossa it passes through foramen rotundum then it reaches the pterygopalatine fossa we will just write it over here Mandib maxillary nerve passes through foramen rotundum then it reaches the pterygopalatine fossa after that it passes through inferior orbital fissure it passes through inferior orbital fissure and then it reaches the orbit the bony orbit in the orbit it is basically traveling in the floor of the orbit and uh, we say that it is traversing in the infra orbital groove or the canal and then it comes out uh, from this infra orbital canal or the groove through the infra orbital foramen and it comes towards the face so thus we can see it is having uh, different parts 
uh, one part is running in the cranial cavity, another part is running within the pterygopalatine fossa, some part is running in the orbit and the rest of the portion or the terminal part is coming into the face. Now, different portions are giving rise to different branches. If we say that in cranial cavity, the branches which are given in the cranial cavity, it gives meningeal branch which will be supplying the dura mater. Then as it reaches the pterygopalatine fossa, within the pterygopalatine fossa, it is giving three branches posterior superior alveolar nerve posterior superior alveolar nerve apart from this it gives zygomatic nerve and ganglionic branches then after this it uh, after giving these three branches, it will pass through the infraorbital fissure and it continues as infraorbital nerve. This infraorbital nerve is the one which is running in the infraorbital groove or the canal. So, in the orbit or we say in the infraorbital, in the infraorbital canal, the various branches which are given by this nerve or specifically this infraorbital nerve, it is the middle anterior and middle superior alveolar nerve. This anterior, middle and the posterior superior alveolar nerve, they form a dental plexus which supplies all the teeth of the upper jaw. Then lastly, when the nerve it comes out through the infraorbital foramen and it reaches the face, over here this infraorbital nerve, it will divide into various branches to supply the area over here. It will give palpebral branch, then it gives a nasal branch and the labial branch. So all these are the branches of the maxillary nerve. So we have talked about uh, the trigeminal nerve, the mandibular nerve and the maxillary nerve. Now, if you talk about the motor nerve supply of the face, when we talk about the motor supply of face, all the muscles of the face or, or the facial muscles, all the facial muscles of the face, they are mainly supplied by facial nerve except four muscles of mastication, except the muscles of mastication. These muscles of mastication, these are actually supplied by the mandibular nerve. And if you are asked to uh, enumerate these muscles of mastication, these include temporalis, masseter, lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid. So, all these muscles, these are supplied by the mandibular nerve. And apart from this, any other muscle mentioned, it will be supplied by the facial nerve. So, that means if the question is asked regarding the orbicularis oris or, or, or orbicularis oculi, vaccinator muscle or any other muscle, that those muscles are supplied by the facial nerve, only these four muscles supplied by the mandibular nerve. Now, over here, when we talk about the facial nerve, when we talk about the facial nerve, we should know the branches of the facial nerve in the head and neck or in the face area. Now, this facial nerve, it, uh, it passes through various foramens. This facial nerve, it is present in the posterior cranial fossa. It passes through internal auditory meters and then it reaches towards the ear. It reaches the ear, it is related to the inner ear, then into the middle ear. And it exits the ear or the middle ear via a foramen that is a stylomastoid foramen. The stylomastoid foramen. And then it reaches the face or we can say towards the neck area. When it reaches towards the outer aspect of the face, in the face it is traversing through the parotid gland. 
and when it is passing through this parotid gland, it facial nerve it divides into the various terminal branches. Now in its course within the middle ear as well as when it reaches towards the face, it gives off various, various branches. Now if we talk about the various branches which are given off by the facial nerve, within the middle ear it is giving three branches, the greater petrosal nerve, corda tympani nerve, and nerve 2 stapedius. So these three branches are given within the middle ear. Then as the nerve it comes out through uh, or exits the, uh, the stylomestoid foramen, it gives off few branches which include posterior auricular nerve. This posterior auricular nerve it supplies the occipital belly of the, the occipital belly of the occipital frontalis muscle. Then apart from this nerve to posterior belly of digastric. Another branch is nerve to stylohoid. After giving these three branches, the nerve it traverses through the substance of the parotid gland and within the parotid gland, it gives off terminal branches. It gives off terminal branches, there are five terminal branches and these five terminal branches, they spread in the face in such kind of manner which resembles the feet of a bird and the pattern of branching is given the term as pes and serinus. Now these five terminal branches, these include temporal branch, then we have zygomatic branch, buccal branch, marginal mandibular, the marginal mandibular branch and lastly we have cervical branch. All these branches, they supply the various muscles of the face. 